Joining me for a further look at what's playing itself out on that market scene is Jacques Pretorius from Sinai Securities. Uh, Jacques, thank you so much for your time and a good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Wonderful, Jacques. It looks like uh, the December rally is uh, continuing. It is the first day of uh, December. I think uh, a lot more could still happen and we could see volumes uh, fall as people go off to enjoy uh, their festive season. But so far, so good. No, absolutely. I think uh, we mentioned it about a month ago in an interview that we expected the bull market to start with a year-end rally. I think we're up quite nicely for the month already, or at least November, over the 8%. So we, we're chugging along. I think there's a bit more to come, perhaps a very short term, slightly overbought, but I think we are going to see higher levels. Um, and we've also got the future close out ahead and a rebalance of the index a bit later in the month. So perhaps, you know, those two events will hold the liquidity up to some extent and we'll see higher levels. I'm also keen to get your thoughts on uh, the oil outlook here. Of course, uh, OPEC uh, countries have met. Uh, a few things that happened here that don't often happen with OPEC meetings. Firstly, there was a bit of a delay, uh, Jacques, but also uh, what we saw there was uh, different countries announcing uh, their commitments to cutting. Normally, it's one statement coming out of OPEC+. Plus. I'm wondering uh, if then this shows that there, this was a bit of a tense meeting, um, but uh, all in all, looking like the aim is to cut back on uh, production. Yeah, funny enough, you saw the ship, uh, the oil price coming off somewhat after the news, and uh, you'd expect the, 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 the reverse of that, actually, that it should go up. But, you know, we've seen this in the past. There's no firm commitment right from any of these other players. And remember, the uh, we've seen it in the past where they mentioned that they were going to cut back on their production, especially some of these other countries, but they all squeezed for revenue, you know, from a... A personal country point of view and uh, it's, it's, it remains to be seen so I'll take it with a pinch of salt that they're going to cut um, uh, and I think that's what the market's telling us the market's telling us they're taking this these so-called cuts with a pinch of salt and uh, I think there's, there's there's issues on the demand side so perhaps we don't see I, I'm hoping that we don't see such a strong oil price going forward and it dissipates to some extent it should help us a lot from an inflation point of view Definitely crossing fingers there, Jacques. Let's also speak about uh, data coming out of China here. We have seen a PMI actually falling uh, a little bit, uh, contracting for a second straight month. I am seeing miners, though, doing uh, pretty well today. I'm wondering if this means um, that they're still, it's still better than what markets anticipated. Yes, I think the figures that did come out were slightly better than anticipated. Um, look, we, we've been waiting and waiting for this China story to turn around for them to come out of COVID and improve. And there certainly are some figures that are showing some improvement. Um, it's slow, uh, so it's not uh, performing in the way that we uh, would have hoped for. Uh, but I think there is some some signs of recovery in the uh, Chinese uh, economy. Uh, the markets haven't done exceptionally well yet. Um, so it's some, still something we're looking at, right, anticipating to do a bit better next year. Also, can to get your thoughts on some company news, maybe starting off with the Quantum Foods. Now, of course, Quantum Foods badly impacted by the issue of avian flu. Uh, but when I saw that their revenue was up 15.5%, and that even though... Uh, Eps had fallen, uh, you know, and Heps had fallen. I think they have managed to weather the storm as best as possible, considering the cars that they've been dealt. Yes, no, absolutely. I was actually surprised to see the revenue up in, in this environment that they were, they've been in. Obviously, profits are down, being impacted by that bird flu, but also by the, the power issues, right? Um, so, yes, I think a, a okay figure right under the circumstances for the company. It's obviously one of our smaller ones, not that liquid. Uh, but yeah, uh, a decent set of results under the circumstances. Let's talk Tiger Brands now. Of course, I think this is the big one of the day. Uh, we've seen a leadership shakeup here. Uh, we've also seen a revenue up 10%, uh, HEPs uh, up 2%. I'm wondering what do you make of this. In my mind, Jacques, when a consumer looks at a Tiger Brands product, they often see premium brands. And of course, in this tough economic environment, we might have seen many consumers moving uh, to uh, you know more affordable brands. Yeah, that, that usually is the case, right, that you're moving down the the brand scale, if you want to call it that, right, when the market is in a very difficult situation. I think a company like this is driven really quite a bit by the economic growth, and we're seeing the economic growth quite tough. I can't see anything wrong with their balance sheet. Uh, it looks uh, solid. 
Um, so from that point of view, I, I don't think it's a problem, but certainly you need growth. And even if you look at the in, uh, earnings forecast for the next year, not fantastic yet. Between 2024 and 2025, the market's looking for 10%. So, you know, a bit of lackluster um, growth coming through on the company. Um, at a 10 multiple, it's not expensively priced. Uh, it is a defensive. But in my mind, you know, the share price has been range bounding in the last few years between, uh, let's call it, uh, what is it, 140 Rand and around about 225. So quite a large range, currently at about 184. Uh, this morning, the market, the, the share price has been in, in slight positive, slight negative. Uh, and uh, picking up a bit right right now um i wouldn't rush out to buy it but it's um, uh, a solid business and then let's talk about the sasol acquisition oh well we've just heard uh, that a uk-based energy company prax group will acquire a 56 percent stake in that natria for oil refinery let's speak about this a move uh, you know south africa's refinery capacity has declined steadily uh, over the last few years and i'm wondering if a new investor and some cash uh, could at least uh, see a, a better operation coming out of natria um i think it's something else mm. i think pax is sort of viewing right at uh this acquisition as an entry into the rest of Africa as well. Yeah. Perhaps they've got some contacts to export some of this um, refining capacity into the rest of Africa. So they see it as a foothold into Africa. And I think from the, the converse to that, Sassel and Natref, perhaps seeing it as a way to actually ca cash in on some of this, um, on, on the situation and reducing some exposure to to that environment. So I think it's more it's more the, the PAC side, right, as the buyer that push for the transaction as opposed to a SAS or selling a stake. Well, Jacques, I'm keen to get your stock pick in a bit, but first I'd like us to reflect on counters that have found favor with your industry peers. It's in Finian Technologies. They listed in Germany. They have a spin off from Siemens. They one of the biggest microchips um, microchip manufacturers in the world, um, specifically concentrated in the automotive, automotive sector and also in green technologies and consumer. In line with the rest of the semiconductor market, they have, um, they have been rallying, but differenti differentiates them from me, and we were talking about Lewis and the change in earnings profile, is Infineon's leadership and also dominance in something which is called silicon carbide microchips, which is a new kind of chip that's used specifically in high temperature environments, like for example, solar energy, and could be the new thing as far as that industry is concerned. Everybody's concentrating on artificial intelligence at the moment. I think they're forgetting about the advances in industrial companies. Infineon is going to construct the biggest diamond carbide plant in the world in Malaysia over the next few years. That could be a huge game changer and an earnings vector for the company. Staying local, Sibanya Stillwater, I think they're good stock. They're, the pricing is right, they're in multiple uh, minerals. They have a great investment offshore, which is gonna target the battery technology. Their model around uh, recycling is really good. I think they're getting knocked over by the price, but they're reducing their balance sheet uh, burden from the debt. And I think over the long term, they will have a great um, upswing and position in the market. All right, Jacques, keen to get your thoughts on those counters in Finian Technologies as well as Sibanya. Yeah, I guess in the case of the first one, right, you have to go and do your homework overseas mm -hmm. in some of these uh, chip producers and AI is a big theme at the moment. So I think there is some benefit, right, of doing your homework and finding these jewels out there. I'd probably stick to NVIDIA for the time being, you know, having quite a nice run, consolidating over the last three, four months. And you know what you're buying there. Um, so I'd, I'd, I'd probably play it safe. From a point of uh, Sabanya, Sabanya's come down so much, you know, it's so hard hit uh, through the, the last year. that I, I believe there's a strong possibility that the share price could bounce with this bounce in the market. Um, is the resource cycle the, 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 the best sector to be involved in? I don't think so in the rest, for the rest of uh, this cycle in the interest rate declining cycle. But having said that, you know, um, Sabania can bounce from this 21 level to quite easy up back up to 30, to 30 Rand, which is an earlier 50% increase. So I'd go along with that, uh, that it's bombed out and can potentially recover uh, in the short term. And which counter are you going with this afternoon, Jacques? 
I'm going with something else uh, interesting. Um, I'm going with the uh, Satrix Emerging Market ETF. I'm always throwing in a curveball here. Um, I think the emerging markets right, are at a point right of uh, being able to outperform their um, more developed peers going into next year. And for the reason, uh, the reasons being, I think the dollar could weaken a bit after an exceptionally strong run for a long time. We've seen a bit of a dollar weakness more recently. I think that dollar weakness uh, dissipates or you know uh, continues right for the next year or two as the market shifts right to the emerging market in an interest rate declining environment. So um, the uh, emerging market ETF has also changed its um, comp composures to some extent, uh, components to some extent. Uh, China has fallen quite a bit in that index from about 37% a, a year ago to down to below 25%. And the India and Singapore, Taiwan, Brazil, all those countries have actually increased their weighting in that index. And uh, I would like to have exposure right to those countries going into the interest rate declining cycle. I think that can outperform. So that will be my pick. Well, Jacques, it's always a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for wrapping the week up for us. That was your midday markets update with uh, independent analyst Jacques Vitorius.